our privilege yesterday to speak with the captain of the offensive line, if you will, the guy who's making the calls at the line, the center, Connor Pay. On topic are things like media poison, why it's weird to get so much attention, and what does it really mean to earn one of those starting spots in a group that's so deep? Here is our two-on-one all-access with Connor Pay. Connor, outside of football life and before training camp gets going, what do you do for fun to help you kind of adjust and, and move back into everyday football? Um, well, I love to go boating in the summers. So that's kind of, that's what I do when school's over and we only have football in the mornings. Go boating, go fishing, go do some of those things. Um, and then taper that off as camp gets closer, get a little more focused, watch a little more tape uh, and kind of help transition to get my mind into into football mode. Okay, so, so the follow-up question there is, did you catch your 200-pound grouper and get enough, <laughs> nice. no. get enough 360 no. degrees in on the wakeboard? No, no, <laughs> for sure. Rainbow trout, a pound or two. That's what I was maxing out at. I saw that online, though. Someone just drags a 200-pounder in there. It was crazy. Okay, so tell us more about you, uh, because you're kind of a new character to this group, and you're the center. You're a super, super important figure here. Yet you played more games than people maybe remember last year when James Empey got hurt. Yeah. Yeah, so at the start of the year, I was starting at right guard. Um, then when James uh, got hurt, I slid over to center. Um, so it's that's kind of that's kind of my story basically of the last two years didn't really do much in 2020 right off my mission um, and then now uh, transitioning to center full-time which has been good to kind of focus on one position and kind of hone in it's been nice so. did you play center growing up at all no no hey okay, this is new I never played center till I got here gotcha. so yep I came in as a tackle um, and played tackle most of my first year with guard a little bit too. The opening in the two deep was at guard. Um, and then Grimes and Mateos had me uh, start learning how to snap a little bit about halfway, maybe three quarters of the way into the year just to see if I could do it. Um, and it came pretty naturally. So ended up learning a little bit, played in a couple games at center. Ended up having to play center in the bull game, which was my first real game action when we weren't up by 50. So... Um, now transitioning to that center position full time, still learning. It's still pretty new, but because I only got half a year at it last year, but it's been good. How do you feel about the responsibility of being essentially the play caller of the offensive line and what that means on such a talented group that BYU brings back up front? Well, it's really nice because everybody's experienced, and so everyone really knows what's going on. So basically, all I'm doing is confirming what's in everybody's minds already. Um, and just making sure uh, I know the playbook the best I possibly can. So if something weird does happen, I can make sure everybody's on the same page. Um, and so I've, I've probably spent more time in the playbook this offseason than any other in my life just because of that responsibility and trying to know the offense the best I possibly can where I'm not worried about any of the guys I'm playing next to, but just making sure that if something does happen, we can all get on the same page. And as long as we communicate, and everyone's doing what everyone thinks the other person's doing, we'll be able to pick most things up and get the job done. So, Give us a sense pre-snap of what that's like. You break the huddle, then what? So depending on the play call, my reads go first level, second level, third level. So my first read is reading what kind of front they're in. And you're well, saying it out loud? Yep, I'll call it out once I see it, where their backers are lined up. Um, and then I'll make what's called an ID based off of that. And IDs mean different things for different plays and different schemes. But based off of that ID, basically everyone else knows where they're supposed to go. And so it's my responsibility to be able to process the defense really fast, make the call quick so everyone can make sure they know where they're going. And sometimes it even goes up to safeties. If they're in specific locations, we may turn a protection or something like that. But Does Clark ever go, now wait a minute. Does he ever help you if you miss something? Is, who's like the first guy to help you there? Are you kidding? I help myself. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I'm just joking. I don't need anybody's help. I help him. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> well, it's it's kind of, yeah, if, if something is like blatantly wrong, if I just say a call that's wrong, it'll be Clark, it'll be Joe, it'll be Blake, Harris, any of those guys will be like, hey, no, look at this, and we'll change it, and I'll be like, oh, yep. Or if they want to double check, you just be like, hey, you sure? You don't want to do this? And I'll be like, yep, no, we want to do this. So we just communicate. As long as we communicate, it works out fine. 
Jeremy and I were recently discussing the fact that the offensive line gave up just 15 sacks total last year. 12, sorry. 12, 15 the year before. 15 the year before. Yep. Okay, so 12. So you are That's paying, you are paying attention to that. That's okay. why I know that number. Is that the I stat? incorrectly. Okay. It was, it was 12 and then it was 15. 12 and then 15 the year before. Yep, okay. Yep, yep. So is that the stat that matters most to you? Or if not, is there another stat that the offensive line cares more about? Well... I mean, we do care about sacks a ton because generally, with rare exceptions, it's usually our fault if a sack's given up. So we care about that number. Um, that's 12 sacks too many. Uh, but I think, you know, we're, we're not, we don't have any stats really for ourselves. So really, we care about the stats of the offense. How many yards per carry are we getting? Because that has a lot to do with how successful we're being up front. If we're getting four or five yards a carry, chances are we're doing a decent job. Um, ta tackles for loss is one we look at a ton. We, we watch all the tackles for losses from last year somewhat frequently to figure out what happened because we should never have tackles in the backfield. Um, and uh, explosive plays, we want to help generate explosive plays. So that's probably, those are probably the main stats we pay attention to. So, Do you have internal grades where the coaches give you a grade for a game? Because there's, there's PFF grades as well. Like, what do you guys look at to be like, Okay, we're all linemen. We don't have the same stats, yet you are getting kind of yeah. other metrics. Yeah, Coach Funk will grade every player, and you'll get a grade for the game. Um, and, yeah, Pro Football Focus does their thing, but that's a little different. It's kind of an outside guy trying to guess the scheme we're running and then grading us off that. Um, but Coach Funk will grade every game and every play, and we'll get our – yeah. Okay. So you'll get a grade, um, a percentage uh, on Mondays when we come back. So And then we'll go over it, and he gives you a sheet basically play-by-play. Play. You either got a plus or a minus on that play, and we'll figure out what we do well here, what we do wrong here, and we'll go through play by play. You ever walk out with a hundred? No. <laughs> no, I don't think anybody ever has. No. So. There's always a first time for everything, right, Connor? Yeah. We we uh, we uh, we try and get to the this very year, top. It's happening. I don't know. Yes. played a perfect game. You let me know, <laughs> so I can go watch it. Fair enough. And try to mimic it. Connor, pay the BYU Center with us on BYU Sports Nation. We're at camp. Uh, Connor, we've heard a lot about the versatility of this line and the sheer number of available, experienced veteran leader bodies on the offensive line. Um, how much does it matter to get the starting nod to you guys? Because it feels like eight or nine of you are going to rotate in pretty significantly, but yeah. what does that starting spot mean to the guys on the line? Well, I mean, everybody, you want to play at the level of a starter, and uh, you want Coach Funk to have the confidence in you to be able to say you're the starter for me, the starting center. Um, and, uh, you, I mean, obviously you strive for that. That's why you're out here practicing so hard every day. It's because he's trying to figure out how to set the depth chart. We're rotating a bunch right now. Dudes are moving around because he's trying to find the best group of five guys to put on the field to put us in the best position to win. Um, and so, yeah, there could be some rotating. I don't know how they're going to do that. That's up to Coach Funk and what he thinks will be best for the team. Um, but obviously everyone's striving for a starting spot. And that pushes everyone, that elevates everyone to a, a different level because you know that if you're not given 100% effort, you're going to start losing reps because there's somebody right on your tail who wants that starting spot too. So. This group returns a lot of guys, tons of talent, uh, a lot of conversation about the O-line, which is exciting. Sometimes it's just whatever, right? It's weird. Tell me about that. Well, it's, well for one, because we don't really care. Um, <laughs> And for two, normally people aren't focused on the linemen, but we like it that way. We're just there to do the work and get out. Um, and we don't, I mean, we've used this phrase before, the media is poison. Um, and it's true. Yeah, all those other media yeah. Yeah, besides us, they're poison. In a lot of ways, they're poison. No offense, no offense. But uh, because they'll, they'll turn on you in a second. That's the reality. Uh, and so... We don't really care. The media can say whatever they want. What matters is the people in that building and what we're doing on the field here. That's what we're focused on. So. Yeah, no no offense taken. Maybe we'll just bring up the sack that you gave up in the Baylor game. Okay, <laughs> Come okay. On. Don't <laughs> no. take him off. I'm closest to him. Be careful. I kid. Be careful. I kid. Jeez. I kid. Um, now, it's hard for us not to gush about just the experience, the sheer size of the line, uh, the talent level there. But where do you feel like the offensive line needs to be better right now at this point in camp? Because for all the good that has been said, you're hard on yourselves. Where do you need to be better? The list is long. Um, right now, I would say consistency, probably. 
Um, we do a lot of really good things, uh, just not 100% of the time. Um, and usually it's if four out of the five guys are doing it right, the play's busted because of the one. And so just being consistent, all five guys on the same page, going hard every play. And that's, that's part of what fall camp is for, is for the unit to gel um, and to uh, you know, become extremely consistent in, uh, in our play because that's eventually what's going to win us games. So I'd say consistency right now. He's an expert boater. He's an expert fisherman. <laughs> Most importantly, he is the starting center for BYU football on their offensive line. Connor, great to have you on the Thanks, show. Scott. Thanks. Thanks, guys. Appreciate you.